to the 21st day of our fasting and prayer meeting. Glory to God forevermore. We give God praise and thanks. It's been awesome for 20 days. I believe we've been blessed. I believe our lives have been traveled. I personally have been blessed, I've been transformed. In fact, I was talking with our um, um, pastor this morning and I said, wow, I really need a retreat where I have to go and listen to all the teachings that have been coming up. Because um, quite a lot of the things that have come up in the course of the teachings are not in my notes. They come on the altar there, so I want to really go and listen so I can um, hear what God is saying to me, amen, through me, amen to Jesus. So this is the first day and the second to last day. The Bible says that is the end of a matter than the beginning. I want to welcome everyone joining us from wherever you're joining us from. I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. I want to appreciate God's presence and God's release of his revelation to us. It's by the privilege of his grace that we can get this load of revelation. Amen to Jesus. I want to also appreciate everyone who has been joining in live and those who join in later. I want to say big God bless you to you. Thank you for investing your time, investing your money, investing your data into your, into your own life and into your future. I appreciate you for doing that because we live in a generation when people don't understand what investment means. And when they see the results of investment in the life of people, they begin to either get jealous of them or criticize them. Life is built on investment. If you are not investing nothing, you are not getting nothing. So when I see people who invest, I appreciate them and I appreciate God for their life. So I want to appreciate you and appreciate God for your life, for investing. This prayer meeting is tagged, um, um, made perfect, and is in line with our fasting and prayer for the month of July in the Plural Nation. Um, and the privilege of God's grace, the, the first month in every quarter, we give it as a sacrifice to the Lord in fasting and prayer, and trust the Lord to lead us through the remaining months of the quarter. And we did that in January, April, and now in July. And we trust God for October. It's been awesome. I tell you, every of this um, time we give it to God in fasting and in prayer, God has always done something glorious in our life, and we give God a lot of praise. So um, today is the second to last day of our fast. We fast five days in the week. That's the five working days, and the weekends we are not fasting. Amen. So that's where we run our fast, and um, that's what works for us. Amen. So I want to thank as many who have been joining, and also want to encourage you if you've not listened to the teachings of the past, you can go back. Everything is stored up on our Facebook page. You can also go to um, our pod podcast channel, uh, online radio, Grace Life Komi. You get it on Breaker, Spotify, Anchor, Google. You can get us there. And you can get a lot of teachings there for you. Amen to Jesus. Praise God. We are going into God's word now. Amen to Jesus. Let us lift up our voices and bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise and glory. Give him honor and thanks. Give him bless his name. Magnify him. Glorify him because there is no like him. Exalt him. Celebrate him. Seek God's and Jesus, we worship you. Yes, Holy Spirit, we glorify you. Yes, the Almighty Father, we extol you. Yes, Yahweh, we give you all the glory you deserve. Yes, we recognize your presence in our midst. We acknowledge your manifest presence. Yes, we welcome you, we say rule and reign. Let Jesus alone be glorified. Let no flesh glory in itself. Yes. We give you all the praise and glory because you are God all by yourself. Yes, Lord. Take charge of this atmosphere. Take charge of this environment. To your glory and praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Uh, once again, we want to appreciate everyone who is joining and who is joining. We also want to appreciate everyone who has allowed the Holy Spirit to use their fingers as media evangelists to click the like and the share button. Um, and also to good, drop a good comment, say the good Lord bless you. Every time you do that, you are um, allowing the word of God to grow mightily. The Bible says so many people the word of God and prevail. You are using, you are being used as a tool to ensure the word of God grows mightily and prevail. When somebody sees that you like something, he wants to know why you liked it. When somebody sees that you shared some shares um, a, um, a, a post, he wants to know why you shared it. And when somebody sees a good comment you 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 you, you dropped. He wants to know why you dropped a good comment, so that's why it's good we do this. I want to encourage everyone to do it if you have not been doing it, and uh, we must know that when we do it, 
we are doing ourselves a great favor and allowing the Lord Jesus. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, we have been on the speed of just being made perfect. We are the hero of faith, and by the grace of God, we've sorted quite a number of them. Amen to Jesus, Enoch, Noah, David, uh, 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 Abel, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah. And uh, we go to Joseph, amen, nine of them, wow, hallelujah to Jesus. Today we are going to be studying another beautiful hero, uh, praise God forevermore. And um, today, by the grace of God, in line with this study, we are going to be studying, um, I, I titled this um, teaching by the help of the Holy Ghost, Hidden by Faith, Hidden by Faith, amen. Um, I believe some of us will say some of the topics we have here, the, the, the phrases are, um, suspense and um, maybe a little weird, but you get to see it in the course of the teaching. Amen to Jesus. All right, hidden by faith. In our previous lesson, we learned that Joseph was the midpoint and the connector between Abraham and Moses. We learned that his arm also was the midpoint and the connector between Abraham and Moses. We learned so many beautiful things about Joseph. Amen. We also learned that Joseph was the initiation of the promise made by God to Abraham, while Moses was a manifestation of the promise. So Joseph was needed for Moses to carry out his assignment. Without the presence of Joseph, Moses would have not been relevant in the scheme of things of Yahweh. Without Joseph, Moses would have not been relevant in the manifestation of the promise that God gave to Abraham. So Abraham needed Joseph and he needed Moses. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. So the midpoint was very important. This makes us understand that Joseph and Moses were vital and important persons who played pivotal roles in the manifestations of God's promise to Abraham. Now this makes us understand that even when God gives when God gives you a promise, there are still some persons that play vital and pivotal role in the manifestation of that promise. So I say, God has spoken to me, that settles it, that's all. With God saying, that's all. God has spoken and that settles it and that. No, hey, let me tell you something. There are still some human factors that God needs to put in place for his promise to you to be manifested. Are we together? The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto a good measure, praise and shaking together, running over. Shall who? Men. Men. Men give unto your bosom. Not shall God give unto your bosom. Even God has to use men to make his promise manifested in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even Jesus that was conceived of the Holy Spirit needed the Father figure around him in the person of Joseph. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because if Joseph was not allowed the possibility of Mary being stoned to death that still happened. Watch this. When Joseph knew that Mary was heavy with the child, he said when he knew, because he loved her, he wanted to, he wanted to let go of her privately, but that would have still been possible. Because if he had done that, according to the Jewish law, they would have asked, Mary, how come you are pregnant and Joseph is claiming not to be the father and he has let go of you? She cannot, you cannot make a pre you cannot keep a pregnancy private. After three months, it become public. Are we together? And so what he tried to do privately, God in his ultimate and infinite knowledge knew that he cannot keep it private. So his presence was still needed for the security of the life of mother and baby. So he wanted to do it privately, but that the private decision would have ended up in a public disaster. She would have been stoned to them because when a woman her, uh, is in a relationship, when she has been betrothed, she stays separate in the Jewish um, culture. She stays um, living on a separate from her husband for one year, one year, one year, but they already been betrothed. In fact, it, it, it's actually, she's actually seen as his wife, amen, but they are not married for one year. It's after one year they now come and they do the, the man, the, the groom comes to do his marriage at night too. That's when he comes to do it. And he doesn't know the day that he does it. It is his father that wakes him up at night and tells him today is the day to go and get married. So that is for the period, the, the bride has to always be ready with her bridesmaid for what the wedding. What a kind of life. And so in that course of that one year, nothing was happening like pregnancy. Nothing. If she's pregnant, then she's, 
she has, she has broken the law and then she must be stoned to death. And so God in his omniscient and infinite knowledge knew that the presence of Joseph was needed for the security of his seed in Mary. So what did he do? When Joseph wanted to privately dispose of Mary, the angel came to him and said, hey, hey, don't do that. She's, she, she's heavy with the seed of Yahweh. A holy seed, a holy seed, and then he said, well, I will stand by. I will stand by. Because my presence is needed for the manifestation of this prophecy. So in the manifestation of prophecies, men are needed. The focus is not on men, it's on God, but men are needed. And God is the one who positions men in the manifestation of presence. Now we must understand something. That both from the side of Joseph and the side of Mary, Jesus came from what? Royalty. Joseph came from the lineage of what? Of, of David. And Mary came from the lineage of what? David. Actually, it's actually been that Mary was actually like his cousin. <laughs> and he met to Jesus. So, it came from the lineage of royalty. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, God had to position Joseph. If Joseph was not positioned, the, the, the prophecy would have been terminated. So, God positions men in our lives for the manifestation of prophecy. You can't say, I don't need men. You need God above all. You look up to God, but you need the men that God brings into your life. You don't need every man. Are you getting what I'm saying? But you need the men that God brings into your life for the fulfillment and the manifestation of prophecy. So Abraham needed Joseph. If Joseph did not come in his lineage, that prophecy would have been suspended in the heavens still forever. There are some of us, there are some prophecies that are suspended in our lives. The reason why they are suspended is because the Joseph has not yet arrived. And until Joseph arrives, the prophecy cannot be initiated. And until the Joseph, until the prophecy is initiated, the Moses cannot arrive for the manifestation of the prophecy. So for some of us, it's the season where Joseph has to arrive. Why for some of us is the season where Moses has to arrive? But whatever season you are, for the prophecy to manifest in your life, I decree in the name of Jesus, if you are in the season of Joseph, I push your Joseph to manifestation in the name of Jesus. If you are in the season of Moses, I push your Moses to manifestation in the name of Jesus. Every Joseph that has to manifest in your life, every Moses that has to manifest in your life, for the promises that Yahweh has given to you to be initiated and to, ma to manifest. I command the show in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's not part of my teaching. But if the Lord leads in that direction, we go. Amen to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right, now, so in this lesson, we will commence the study on the hero of faith. That is a just man made perfect called Moses. We we'll commence a study of Moses, and uh, we all know Moses. Amen. We all know Moses. Praise God. When we hear about Moses, the first thing that comes to mind is the greatest leader who initiated the Old Testament and led Israel out of Egypt. Actually, the Bible says in the whole um, uh, of the Old Testament, the, the meekest man was what Moses. The only person that became meek after him was Jesus. Praise God. And, 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 um, uh, there's a book I'm reading, and it actually bases its study on, on, on the children of Israel leaving Egypt. And it's a book for entrepreneurs, for businessmen, Jewish, Jewish principles on business success. And the book does a lot of analysis on the person of Moses. And, it, and the book says Moses happens, according to the Jewish text, Moses happens to be the most humble man. So when we talk about meekness, we talk about what? Moses. Amen to Jesus. So we all know him from that light. Praise God. This is all recognize him as a man of faith. Amen. But we most times do not look at and acknowledge faith in his birth and sustenance. We only look at faith from his, from his let me use the word, his 40 years and above. Or let's say even from his 80th year and above. But we don't look at his, we don't look at faith from his bed and his what? Sustenance. Praise God forevermore. Now, but the writer of Hebrews does this and will do the same. Amen. 
When the writer of Hebrews wanted to talk about it, he said initiated Moses' talk with what? His birth and his sustenance. Why? It makes us know how important that aspect of faith was in Moses' life. Are we together? In this slide, we are studying a heroine and a, a hero and a heroine of faith whose names were not mentioned by the writer of Hebrews, but their act was mentioned. Their act of faith were mentioned. This hero and heroine, their names were not mentioned by the writer of Hebrews, but their act of faith were mentioned. Who were these hero and heroine? They were the father and mother, that is the parents of Moses. They were from the tribe of Levi. We see that in Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. It says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, a man, they didn't even really mention his name. A man <laughs> of the tribe of the, of the house of Levi and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So a man of the house of Levi took a wife, a daughter of Levi. So the parents of Moses were a man of the tribe of Levi, of the house of Levi, and a woman of the house of Levi. The parents were Levi. That is what the, the Bible tells us about them. So, and the woman, but see, it was so serious that they didn't even call their names. Why? Because when you look at scriptures, when a man's name is not called, when a woman's name is not called, his situation is his identity. Blind Bartimaeus. The word Bartimaeus is not a name. It's simply the uh, Bartimaeus simply means the son of Timaeus. So what was he called? He was called the blind son of Timaeus. His situation became his identity. They called him the his father came in the name. But his situation overrode his name. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. The woman with the issue of blood. Her problem became her identity. She had a name, but her problem overrode her name. But not only was problems overriding people's name, this study makes us understand that actions and faith also overrode people's names. I prefer my faith to override my name than for my name to be known without any faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? We see when people's problems were their identity, but we also see when people's actions of faith were their identity. The Bible is complete. It's not only problems and people's identity. People's faith can be their identity. It's also their identity. So it's better for them to know, me, to know me as a man of faith, for my faith to be my identity, rather than for my name to be my name. What's the use of a name when it cannot produce any faith? <laughs> Praise God, the Lord. Says that the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Now, what was Moses' mother's heroic act of faith? Hebrews 11, verse 23. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was he three months of his parents. Now, if you look at the preceding chapter book we just read, Exodus 2, verse 1 to verse 2, it says the woman conceived that she hid him three months. But now, Hebrew says he was hidden of his parents. When you check the word parents there, in the Greek, it means um, um, a father. Maybe only it talks about the father figure, but it also means both parents. I get what I'm saying? So now, it makes us understand that this decision to hide Moses was not the mother's decision alone. It was the same of what? Both parents. In fact, it was major levels was spared by his father. So both parents decided to hide Moses. If that is why the decision was done to work together and said they agree. If to agree as to see the shall be established. The decision was because father and mother agreed. I you not say? Because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's command. They saw this child, this child proper, a proper, a proper. And forget the king at all, forget about king. That thing does not exist. But let me tell you something. Other people saw proper children, but they obeyed the king. But this one saw proper child, and they had not forget. My wife, forget about king. Say, say, oh, I say, forget about king. Hide this the king. I say, hide this child. Say, so what if three months the child will start crying? They say, let us first close the whole of three months. When we get them, we'll close the next bridge. Hide this child. This child, my proper picking, is a proper child. <laughs> so, what was 
The parents heroic act of faith. They are heroic act of faith of that. They hid Moses by faith for three months. Three months by faith they were hiding him. Three months. Three months. Why did she hide Moses? Exodus 2 verse 2. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him. The same Hebrews 11 verse 23. It says, because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's command, and they hid him for three months. So why did she hide him? Why did she hide him? Because she saw that he was a goodly and proper child. She was not afraid. Was she gave birth to the child, when she saw the child, fear disappeared. See, there's a kind of miracle that comes your way that he removes fear from you. You don't understand why you are not afraid. Everybody's afraid. People are getting similar kind of miracles because in that time, many women were giving birth to male children. They were getting similar kind of miracles, but they were still afraid. You get what I'm saying? But when she got her own, when she looked at this child, this child that looked like other children, this miracle that looked like other miracle, there was something about the baby that removed fear from her. When the parents looked at it, Fear disappeared. It makes me understand that he was beyond a normal child. They, as they saw him, they saw power in him. They saw greatness in him. And that greatness in him removed the fear from them. Are we together? So because they saw that he was a goodly and proper child, she was not afraid of the king's decree. You see that in Exodus 1 verse 22. What of the king's decree? The king said, says, and Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, every son that is born he shall cast into the river, and every daughter that is, every daughter he shall save alive. So the child was initially when you get a male child, you kill him. What do you do as you get him? Don't turn his head. You may not have the mind to do that. What do you do? Cast him into the river. Is this an old? Is this a new technology? What do they call it? Postmortem abi postbed abortion. You give birth to a child, the child comes out and you kill the child. It's not new. It's an old satanic instruction. It comes from Pharaoh. It's a Pharaohic instruction. And the reason for that instruction is because of fear. Fear that the generation that is coming will be so mighty and they will be able to team up with the others and, and, and fight against them. So this kind of abortion is not new. It's a heroic kind of abortion. It's old. You can't kill them in the womb. Kill them when they come out. Throw them in the Nile River. So what we are saying today, you think is new? As the people are supporting it, some Christians are clapping for it. Say we cannot take care of a child, kill the child now. You have open field. And you, after the end of the day, you still come and say you preach Moses. You are, you are preaching Moses. You are happy that Moses liberated the children of Israel. You claim to be a minister because you preach Moses and the Lord brought Egypt out on eagles' wings. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, the Lord sustained her. He brought Israel out on eagles' wings. After preaching that, you follow what Pharaoh says they should do. If the mother and the father of Moses had obeyed Pharaoh, we'll be able to preach by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. We'll be able to preach, and the Lord brought them out of the Muslim. We'll be able to preach that. It's an old technology. If you can't kill them in the womb, kill them when they come out. And why? Because Pharaoh is always afraid of the next generation. Where they are, they are ready to kill the dead generation. We will have, we will have, after they have been born, any place where that is a widespread thing is because the spirit of Pharaoh is operational there. And he's afraid of the dead generation because the dead generation can do that up to him. Are we together? So it's a fellow child that the people say, Every son that is born, you shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. You shall save a life. But the mother and the father of Pharaoh, when they saw Moses, 
this child is proper and goodly, that fear of that decree left them. Left them. I cannot say. So why did they do that? Because Moses was a goodly child and he was a proper child. What does it mean to be a goodly child? The word goodly is from the Hebrew word tob. And tob is actually another word for what? Prosperity. It's another word for prosperity. There are many words that are used for prosperity in the, in, the, in, in the Hebrew and the Greek. One is shalom, one is tob, one is shalav. And then uh, it, 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 you, 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 you have Greek words also for that. One of the words for prosperity is what? Tob. And tob means good, pleasant, agreed. Other translation of that they say he was a beautiful child. He was a fine child. He was a healthy child. So when they looked at the child, they saw that this child was good. He was pleasant. His spirit was agreeable. As he came out, when they saw this, they cried. And then they saw this man. Say, this guy has an agreeable spirit. Ah! Once it, they saw that, it drove away fear from them. This child is fine. It drove away. But let me tell you something. It's not only Moses that was like that. But what the parents saw was beyond his physical. They saw it from the physical and they entered into the spiritual. Other children were like Moses, but the parents could not see from the physical to the spiritual. So they gave them one through them inside them. <laughs> That's why when they, when they want to give that to a child and she does not see that the child is pleasant, good, agreeable from the physical to the spiritual. Does not see that the child is beautiful, fine, and healthy from the physical to the spiritual. She can afford to uh, donate the child for abortion. And you don't see it. Because she doesn't see to the spirit of the child. She only sees maybe the physical. And maybe when she sees it, it's a fine child, but I don't have what it takes to take care of the child. Kill the child. But the parents of Moses, they were in a very risky point. Now it was not the problem of sustenance. The problem, the problem was what? They had to be killed. If you don't kill them, you as a parent should be killed. What is your problem today for killing your children? You say, I don't have money. Why kill them to children? You cannot take them. That was the problem. You don't have to throw money to give it to take care of children. That's the problem. And you wonder the risk of if you give birth to this child and you leave this child, you will die. Your problem is the child. Your problem is not your life. And yet we give the child for the child's sake. Ah. Uh -huh. But now this problem here is their life was at risk. It's not only the child's life, you know, that their life was at risk. And yet we're ready to damn the consequences of both risk. Because he saw into the spirit of the child. What does it mean for me to for for, uh, for the, that the child was a proper child? What proper is from the um, Greek word asteos, and asteos means of polished manner. That means when the son removes it, this child is polished. It's from body to spirit. This child is polished. It's a tush child, and it also means elegant, comely, fair, handsome. Ayataba. When they were looking at Moses. Fear was dissipating from them. Other translation is beautiful. So this child was from outside to inside. He was just perfection in a bundle. And they said no. When they looked at him, they didn't know when fear left them. Until, until, a month, until parents see their children in that light, the fear of whatsoever society we keep sitting in them. Or they see their children in the life. Because it takes you seeing the child in this life from physical to the spiritual before you can dissipate fear. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Before fear can be. But if you only see them in the physical self, the fear will still be half lead there. But if it comes from the physical to the spiritual, because you first see the physical of the child, when it comes to the physical to the spiritual, it, it sends fear out of the parent's life. Praise God forevermore. This makes us understand that Moses was sustained because of his mother and his father who saw him as a goodly and proper child. And due to this, they were not afraid of the decree of the king. She gave birth to Moses and sustained him. She didn't kill him. I you know what I'm saying? She didn't, she didn't kill him, neither did she offer him to be killed. Some will say, I cannot kill, but I offer for killing. Whether you offer or you kill, you have done the same work. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was the king's mother, but she didn't do that. Despite the heavy risks attached to her actions, 
Now, in a situation where we, it is only the child's life that you are sick, you say, okay, I cannot take care of this child. That problem is only the child. I hear what I'm saying. You can take care of yourself, you cannot take care of the child. But now look at Moses' case. There was a decree. So both child and parent's life were at stake. Double problem. I hear what I'm saying. Yet, they gave birth to the child. And they were ready to face the risk. Why? Why did she do this? Because she saw a great future for her son. By merely seeing his looks, she saw a great future for her son. You only kill something you don't see a future for. You only kill a baby you have not seen his future. When you see the future of a baby, you fight to keep the baby alive, even if it means you giving the baby to an orphanage home. So long as in your hand the baby does not die, and everything you do to keep it alive, you keep it alive. But people who don't see great futures for babies, they kill babies without looking back. Either they kill them by themselves or they offer them to be killed. And you cannot say. She saw a great future for her son. Maybe by looking at him. And this propelled faith in her to secure his life. It propelled faith in her to secure. Moses' mother is an example to many, to many women. It was a double risk. But by seeing the child, faith welled up in her. And she, she faced the risks. Her father said, the husband, she told the husband, she said, we need to keep this child. The husband said, I said, we, we, husband said, we need to keep the child. She said, yes, we have to keep the child. Okay. But what, what happens when the child starts crying? The husband said, no, we get them across that one. But at least for now, keep the child. They were ready to face the risk. Ready. We live in a generation where husband and wife, we are to man and a baby. Husband and wife, we are going to destroy, to kill the baby. Oh, come on. Come on. So you mean you don't see any future in that child? <laughs> Without the faith of Moses' parents, a great man of faith like Moses would have been lost at birth or after birth. Without their faith. A great man of faith like that would have not been lost either at birth or after birth. This was why Moses' parents and his mother precisely were heroes of faith. Their faith was ready to face the risk just to secure this destiny. They gave birth to him and they said, this child is beautiful outside, he is beautiful inside. He has a destiny, he has a future. They never knew they were carrying their savior in their hand. No wonder Miriam was insulting him. Why? He said, don't you know that I was the one who was watching you in the river? Hey, bro, can't you remember? It was me that was watching this small boy. Look at this small boy talking and saying he's a prophet. And if I didn't watch you, they would have stolen you. I would have not known anything about you. If I didn't watch you, man would have not been paid to take care of you. Come on, this small boy, who are you to say you are now the prophet to us? You are our savior. They never knew that when they were taking care of Moses, they were taking care of their savior. You understand what I'm saying? But they did it. I remember um, 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 Dr. Mark's one of the blessed memory. He said when he was a child, when he was a baby, he was asthmatic. And anytime he gets his, when, when he gets his, uh, uh, the attack, his, his elder sister will carry him. She will coach him. She will, she will, she will cover him with, with, with clothes. And then she will nurse him and nurse him and nurse him till the attack subsides. And she kept doing that, doing that, doing that. He said today, she happens to be a, 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 a employed by his organization. And she's a principal person of his organization. He said that later I, later on, he told the sister, I said, he didn't know that when you were taking care of me, you were actually taking care of your boss. <laughs> he didn't know you He said, if you didn't take care of me, then you'd have been jobless by now. Now, they, they didn't understand that when they were not seeing this boy for three years, they were not seeing their salvation. They were not seeing their savior. They didn't know, but they did it for understanding that there was a future in each other. We don't know if you will be the savior. God never told them by prophecy, neither did they hear a voice from God, that this boy called, this baby called Moses, will be the one to save his people. No! His nameless father and mother did not know. But there was faith propelling them on the inside, that this child carries greatness. We don't know what he 
be end of us. But let's secure this greatness. Some of the times we have aborted greatness unknown to us because we were not sensitive in the spirit. What faith does in you is that it makes you recognize greatness in baby form. That's what faith does to you. It makes you recognize greatness in baby form. That's why most of the time I look at people and I laugh. Why do I laugh at them? For years, and I've seen people treat me terribly. I've seen people treat me badly. I've seen people treat me. I, 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 I can't see people who treat me well. And every time I look at them, I laugh. Why? Because it takes faith to see the Moses in me. It takes faith to see the greatness in this baby form. I may not look like it today. I may not look packaged and touch. I may not even look like a, a, a savior for you. But you have messed up with your savior. And tomorrow, when you need the savior, you will not get a savior. Why? Because it takes faith to take care of a baby Moses. Unknown to you that you are taking care of your savior. Yes. That's why I see a lot of people today. They have messed up the relationship with their baby Moses. And when it's time for them to leave the Egypt, there's nobody to take them out. Some of them have actually surrendered their baby Moses to be killed in the river Nara. My, by the privilege of God, you may be God save the baby Moses. And the baby Moses, the only memory he has of that person is he surrendered me to be killed in the river now. It takes faith to see greatness in a baby. Even if you don't know what the greatness will be. The parents never knew what the greatness will be, but they knew that there was greatness. So faith saw greatness. You don't need to know the precise definition of the greatness before you not know it. One of the challenges most of us also have is that we want to know the precise definition of the greatness before we start to read. What will it be? The song says, when I was a baby, I asked my father, what would I be? Would I be rich? Would I be poor? Then said I, said I. <laughs> Some of us want to know precisely what, is, what it is, what it is before we start nurturing this baby greatness. They want to know. They want to know. And because faith, because they are faithless, they cannot know. Why? Because faith does not want to need to get precise information. All faith needs to get is an understanding of greatness. Once faith gets an understanding, it's good to go. So faith will never give you precise information at the initial point. It gives you an understanding. What the parents of those is what it was an understanding on the inside. And that is better by faith. That's why Philip as in took kind of understand it, what thou read it. In one chapter, David asked for understanding like three times. Lord, give me understanding that I may live. Lord, give me understanding that I may know that I was. Lord, give me understanding that I may know that I was. Because without understanding, faith is futile. Faith gets you understanding, even if you cannot pinpoint the things. But it gives you a general understanding that there is something in this. When we came to this mission field, many people thought that when this, when that, they actually gave rumors that were forward night, the people were trying, they said they were, said were fake pastors and every other. We saw a faithless people that lacked understanding. But we kept on today. Many of them now know that these people are genuine, but because they messed up with the baby Moses, they can't even be saved by it. They can't even come close. I see the actions of many of them, and I know that they are, I see the actions and I see regrets. It takes faith to get understanding. Because most of the times you may not get precise, precise information. But understanding is enough. Because understanding will remove fear from you and prepare you to keep securing the baby Moses. And later on in the future, you discover that you just secured your savior. <laughs> so the faith of Moses' parents is the faith that bears, secures, and nurtures great men of great faith. Is a faith that does what? Bends, secures, and not just great men of great faith. That is a faith that we are lacking into this world. I'm telling you the truth. That's a faith we are lacking into this world. The faith, what we have today is a bunch of people who want to see before they believe, or a bunch of people that even after they see it, they don't know the end of the future, the precise future. They don't get to believe. I'm talking from experience. We have a bunch of people who don't understand the faith of the Moses parents. The faith that does not have precise information, but based on an understanding, it keeps securing. Are you getting what I'm saying? A man of God said once, he asked his wife, he said, when you were cutting, 
He was telling his wife, I'll be traveling to the nations of the earth. I'll, I'll meet you to the nations of the earth. I'll be blessing you. I'll be traveling to the Today he's traveling, he has traveled to over 100 nations. And he said, What did he ask his wife? <laughs> that time when I was telling you I was traveling, I travel. Would you believe in you? I was believing you. You see, sometimes eh, when you have people believe in you, you wonder if they are normal. <laughs> you are very wonder if they say, Well, you believe in me. <laughs> you believe in me. He said, Well, I said, Truly, I was actually believing you. Because when you look at him that time, oh, he was a far cry from what he was saying. The wife said, I was actually believing in you. I heard the story of how you. <laughs> How he got married. No money. He already prepared for wedding. No money for the wedding. No money. No money. No. If I let start from even the the the, the, the engagement, he went to to to, to to pay to engage his wife, and he went with. I think was it ten thousand naira. And when he went, he said, if they asked him, the family people would gather together and ask him, how much did you bring? He said, I brought uh, uh, actually 10,000 and 5,000 will be my transport. 5,000 will be what I'll pay. The family is okay, I'll come, let's go and meet. As they went together, they met. From the meeting, they left him in the parlor. From the meeting, they disbanded. They disbanded. We have left you with your, with your foolishness. He said, and he stood there and said, God, he stood there and said, God, will I travel these kilometers, hours? Just to be disgraced. The Lord, show me mercy. Say that he was saying, Lord, show me mercy. A young boy was walking past, and he said, The Lord told him, Call that boy. He called him. And he said, Pray for him. He said, What would I pray? Say, Pray for him. He's deaf and dumb. Pray for him. As he prayed for the boy, instantly the boy's ears opened, the tongue loose, the boy said, That's okay. He did not know that that boy was the son to the most influential woman in the whole village. As news went to the woman that your deaf and dumb son is not talking, first, everywhere scattered. What happened? What happened? Everywhere scattered. And then they asked him, What do you want? He said, Just give me a podium. I want to preach. <laughs> he did crusade by force then. After the crusade, the woman came to meet him. She came for the crusade and then she came to meet him and said, What brought you to our village, great man of God? And he said, I thought came to marry you. <laughs> He said, who is the girl? He told the, told the man again. He said, so what happened? What have, you, have you married or something? I said, they, I brought the money I have. But the family people say they have to do meeting. And after meeting, they dispersed. I didn't see them again. He said, where is the family? He said, what is the girl? Okay. He said, she called the head of the family. Come and meet me at the head of the family again. He said, how much do you say you have? He said, it's 5,000. I said, okay, give me what you have. And he gave the man what he had. See, that said to the matter, she can marry your wife now. That was all. That was all. And then he kept telling her, we travel today, he's traveling around. She saw it. She saw the Savior Moses in the baby Moses. It takes faith. And you see, one of the people that see those things most are women. It's women that see most. When you have a wife that can see the baby, Savior Moses in the baby Moses, it's the greatest faith you can ever display. Thank God for such a wife that God has blessed me with. It takes a few women to see that. It takes a few women. It takes a few women to see that. Especially when the baby Moses is refusing to grow in gold. <laughs> when is refusing to grow? When you have been to make the baby Moses grow, the baby Moses is still like the world, growing slowly. It takes great faith. To see the Savior Moses in the baby Moses. The faith of Moses' parents is the faith that bets, secures, and nurtures great men of great faith. That faith is lacking today. It reminds me of the story of, 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 of um, uh, um, 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 the great man of God um, that won um, the American evangelist. What's his name again? I remember as I'm going. Billy Graham. What was the secret of the Graham salvation? There was a, a, an evangelist who came to his little town, a little village, and held the crusade for days. Pumped money into the crusade after everything. He did not have one, and only one teenage boy came out. One teenage boy. The evangelist reluctantly and greedily and painfully led him to Christ. Let's not be, I did not need somebody. And after that, he packed his equipment and no more evangelism again. Yes, after. Billy Graham was in a meeting. He was leading souls of Christ, leading souls of Christ. And he gave the story of how he got born again. Lo and behold, that evangelist was an old man.
woman in that meeting. And after the meeting, the evangelist sought to meet with him. As he met with him, he told him, I am so, 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 so. The evangelist again. And he said, you mean you are the one? It was you who led me to Christ. Look at the effects of your work today. Time will fill me to tell you another story again. But it takes great men of great faith to bet secure and nurture great men with great faith. Moses' parents, their name was not mentioned. But Moses' name was mentioned. And you get what I'm saying? We live in a generation that we want our names to be mentioned at the expense of our faith. But the parents of Moses, their names were not mentioned at the expense of their faith. They, want, they rather prepare their faith to be mentioned than their names to be mentioned. Until we start nurturing, bending, and securing great men of great faith, we will not be able to produce saviors in the future. And that's one of the problems that the Church of Jesus is having today. Everybody wants to be known. Everybody, even people that don't know nothing want to be known. Everybody wants to be called Archbishop, Arch Prophet, Arch Pope, Arch Reverend, Senior Pope. In this ministry location, the reality is Prof. P R O F, Prophet. Everybody is a Prophet. Everybody is a Prophet. Everybody. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every child that God likes a Prophet. Even teachers have moved their ministry from teaching to prophecy. A young man I know was a very sound teacher of the world. He told me, he said, he used to call me apostle. He said, apostle, I want to prophesy. Everybody is a prophet. So even pastors have moved, migrated from pastoral ministry to prophetic ministry. Evangelists have migrated from evangelistic ministry to prophetic ministry. Uh, teachers have migrated from teaching ministry to what? Prophetic ministry. Apostles, they have people from apostolic ministry to prophet. Everybody wants to be a prophet. You see that you are seeing people trying to be prophet and they are trying to be apostle here. Those are the two things that I bring here. And every small boy is a prophet. I was invited to come and pray for a woman, brother, to come and pray for her. And she got some other two young chaps to pray for them, to pray for her. So they started a prayer. Huh? It's been a while I prayed that kind of Wahala prayer. You know when you're praying, clapping, knocking your head, knocking your head, shaking your head. That's the way they pray. I say, Yeah, God have mercy. The last time I prayed this kind of Wahala prayer is like, how many years ago? I was, I just finished secondary school. Eh? That's like about 20 years ago. Shaking your head, knocking your head, knocking your head. I say, Ah, God, it's been a long time. And they pray, but I don't need to shake it and knock it. I can pray for hours, but I don't need to shake it and knock it. And shake it and knock it. I shake it and come back. I say, Yeah, yeah. As we're praying, the young man, one of them, I saw that he dropped an, a bottle on the table. When I looked at initially I said, okay, after this prayer meeting, thank God this woman brought, called call me to come and pray with her. And I, I will just be the relationship with this young man that she's having us, you know, to pray with her. But in the course of the meeting, I saw on the bottle of oil, I saw prophetic oil. I said, what is prophetic oil? What do you mean anointing oil and prophetic oil? After the meeting, I just managed. Then they did some so called prayer. After the meeting, I managed to. Play. After I finished the meeting, one of them said, "The prayer man, they were sending me to request it. Tomorrow, I can't accept. <laughs> I can't accept. What is the problem? Most everybody, the prophet. Me, I'm not prophet. I'm not pastor. I'm just a student of the world. I'm taking that as my designation, student. And because of this, we do not even recognize greatness when it comes as a baby form to us. Because we are more concerned about prophetic title, apostolic title, than in spending, nurturing, and securing greatness. The focus is on us, not on what we are to give it to. And number two, another uh, thing that secured the life of Moses was the Egyptian midwives who saved Moses' life at birth. But their names and actions were not recorded by the writer of Hebrews. Although their names were recorded in Exodus, but the writer of Hebrews did not even record their names and their actions. But their act was what? Acceptable and honored by God. In Exodus 1, verse 15 to 16, Pharaoh, due to the fear of the increase of the Israelites, told the Egyptian women, midwives, to, to keep every Jewish male child born. Look at it, he says, And the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shif Ra and the name of the other Pua. Upon the soup 
And he said, When ye do the office of midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then ye shall save, ye shall, then, then she shall live. You see, do Pharaoh had double attack. First, keep them at bed. That was the assignment given to the world, midwives. Now, in the failure of the midwives to do that, now, what do you do? If you don't keep them at bed, what do you do? Throw them into the night. By all means, kill these boys. So, Moses came at a time where it was too risky. And you cannot say, and the order of Pharaoh is an old order. It's either you kill them at bed, kill them in the womb, because that time they didn't have the medicines to kill them in the womb. You know, that they have they say, and they don't have scam to know whether it's a male child or not. Maybe body features may show, but it cannot be certified. So, first give birth to the child. So, is that not the, is that not the satanic instruction to they kill them at birth or kill them, kill them at birth? If you don't kill them at birth, when the child finally comes out, what do they do? They kill the child. It's also the favorite thing. It's not new. I you know what I'm saying? The midwives did not obey Pharaoh because they feared God and gave excuses for their disobedience. And their excuse was actually true. What was the excuse? Exodus chapter 1 verse 17 to 19 says, But the midwives feared God. It says, And did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And the king of Egypt called for the midwives and said unto them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the men children alive? And the midwives said unto them, Because the Hebrew women are not as Egyptian women. For they are lively. In other words, they have strength. Actually, the Hebrew women don't give birth the way other women give birth. In the Hebrew men, when they want to give birth, they give birth what they call a birthing stool. Now women lie down to give birth, but then they sit down and they tell them, bend your head and see the child coming out. <laughs> so with that thing you are pushing, what kind of is that? That's a torture way of giving birth. But that is the strength they had. So before you know, baby has come, boom, boom, boom. Say they are, they are lively and are delivered ere the midwives come in unto them. So before the midwives, they don't even need to to tell them push. They carry themselves to where they have to give them when he's at home. Before the midwives, before they even come in, the midwives come on my wife is in the front. The wife are giving it. And the midwives don't have the impact. They don't have the mind to carry the child and throw the child inside now. So he said, okay, since they give birth before you even know what is happening, okay, take the child and throw it inside now. What a fail. And that is the same fearful spirit that is working today. Praise God. So Moses escaped death because of the fear of God possessed by the midwives. This makes us understand that although they are, they are people of faith with no earthly and namely recognition, God recognizes their heroic act of faith. Although they were not written in Hebrews, they were rewarded by God. God dealt well with them and built them houses. That's to say he built their homes. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of the times we know we may say God, but people are not recognizing my act of faith. I've been giving my all. I have been securing. I have been protecting. I have been securing and protecting great men of great faith. Lord, I've been doing, but it looks like men are not recognizing me. No, they may not be recognizing you, but God recognizes you. Exodus 1 verse 19 to 20 says, Therefore God dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied, and works very mighty. Why? They multiplied and works very mighty because the midwives were, like, were securing them. Says, and it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. Not just physical houses, he gave them homes. You have secured my children in the homes of my children. I will give you your own homes. You will not be buried. You will keep homes. Not just houses, but houses. God rewarded them. Moses' life makes us understand and know the place and importance of the fate of others in our lives and destiny. It makes us understand and know what? The place of the faith of God that's in our lives and they say, you, if, or your faith alone cannot achieve your promise, the promise of God concerning your life. We saw that Abraham needed Joseph and Moses. Even Moses needed others. Your faith alone cannot bring to fruition the prophecies over your life. The prophecy of God say, I'm a prophet to myself. Yes, you are a prophet to yourself, but you still need prophets. Say, hey, I don't need anybody to prophesy to my life. Who told you? Your faith alone cannot bring so 
some manifestations in your life. I don't need anybody to, to lay hands on me. No, I can lay hands, be lay hands on yourself. There's a limit to which you will manifest. You still need some other things. No man is born an island. You need some other things to, to, to secure the manifestation of your destiny. I get what I'm saying. Without the faith, that is the fear of God of the Egyptian of the midwives, and the faith, that is to say, the love for the good, goodly child of his mother and his father, he should have died at birth or after birth. So without the fear of God that the Egyptian uh, midwife possessed, which was actually a, a faith, it was faith in operation. The fear of God they possessed was faith in operation because they risked their job. Are you getting what I'm saying? Not only their job, they risked their life too. Without that faith, and the faith of Moses' parents, they risked his life and their life. Moses would have been dead and dead, or after death. The faith of others are important for our faith to be born. And God rewards this faith like he did to the midwives who dealt well with and made, who he dealt well with and made houses for them. The faith of others are required for our faith. Some shouting this, my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith, you know, my faith. You also need the faith of others. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why you need testimonies from others. That's why we tell people to share their testimonies. Why? Because somebody's testimony can build your testimony. Now, in the ancient Hebrew text, it is believed that if a miracle happens around you or close to you, you are next for a miracle. That's an ancient Hebrew text belief. That's why the woman. Jairus understood that text. That's why as they were going for his daughter, they first brought in, he first told Jesus that his daughter was sick. And then as they were going to minister to his daughter, what happened? The woman with the issue of blood came and slowed down the process. Jesus, she told them of the garment of Jesus. Jesus began to minister. Jesus said, who touched me? Time was going. But you know what? When Jairus saw that the woman with the issue of blood had been, she said, ah. he said, if this had happened to her, I am next in line. He understood the Hebrew text that her faith was needed for his faith. And he said, Jesus, no problem. Take your time with her. If she can be healed, my daughter can be healed. And he was not at all. We live in a generation where everybody is selfish with his faith. Lord, me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Lord, do it for me all. Lord, bless me all. Lord, satisfy me all. Lord, answer me my fire all. The reason for that is that we don't understand that we need the faith of others who have faith to produce results. Jairus understood it. And so he said, Jesus, you can take your time, no problem. If she has gotten healed, my daughter will be healed. If a miracle happens close to me, I'm next for the miracle. And as it happened, Jesus took his time with her. Who touched me? 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 Peter said, what are you saying? We are, people are touching you. They said, no, virtual. Let me. But five minutes went. Then I said, it doesn't concern me. If he says somebody has touched him, that means virtue has left him. That means virtue will also leave him for my daughter too. So no problem, let's be waiting. And then the woman came and said, oh, I was in sheer of blood 12 years and his blood stopped. Ah, then I said, yeah, exactly, that's what I was saying. If virtue left this man, the virtue cannot go and, and just be while rolling up and down. It went to do something. And I've seen what it is. I said, if virtue left, if virtue will leave it for my daughter. Let's wait for the drama to finish, for the movie to finish. I said, ah, your blood stop. Your blood stop. Hey, Jesus, we are ready for you today. Your blood is your blood stop. I guess I believe that I was even talking. You mean 20 years? Hey, my mother not said to me. He not said, Jesus said, take your time with this man. I am next in line for the miracle. Blood for 12 years flowing. You mean 12 years? Jesus became the husband. You mean 12 years? Are you kidding me? 12 years? My God, Jesus. My Jesus, you are too much. Uh, don't worry, Jesus. Continue. Take your time with her. Why are you are taking time to take his time? They say your daughter is dead. And I say, ah, forget that matter. 12 years blood have stopped. 12 years. You are talking about, leave that matter. Let us finish this matter first. If this miracle can happen for her, I am next in line for the miracle. And just as he believed in the Hebrew text, that was what happened for him. You need the faith of others. Your faith alone cannot bring some miracles to your life. It cannot manifest some prophecies in your life. The faith of others are important for our faith to be born, and God rewards the faith of others. 
like it did for the Hebrew woman, for the for the big wives, to the Hebrew men, and also for the mother and father of what Moses. How did he do that for Moses' mother? He paid her for nursing her own child. <laughs> for the midwives, he dealt well with them and gave them houses. But for Moses' mother's faith, what did he do? He paid, can you imagine? Some of you, some of you that are wanting babies know that God would have paid you for nursing your own baby. <laughs> some of you that are killing babies before birth, during birth, and after. You know that God would have paid you for nursing your own baby. That's a word for God, from God to somebody. Don't kill that baby. You are, you are thinking of how will I take care of that child? Don't kill that child. God will pay you for nursing your own baby. You say, look at Scripture. It's not too bad. Nice. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away. And not sit for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. When Miriam saw that Pharaoh's daughter taking it, her brother, she ran up quickly to go and meet Pharaoh's daughter and said, Can I get you a woman to nurse your child? She said, Yes, go and get me a woman to nurse a child. And she went and called her home. Is he another person she recall? She must market the mama back. She called her home, the mother of the child. Pharaoh's daughter was so overwhelmed by the grace and the, the, the greatness of Moses that she could not even see the resemblance between mother and child. You can't allow that. You know that Moses carries something from death. She was so overwhelmed by the beauty, the goodness, the properness of Moses. It was inside out that she couldn't recognize that this is the mother of the child. This boy resembles this girl. This boy resembles this woman. And all prayed before and I. There was an anointing that closed her eye from resemblance. And she said, take the child. Not show it for me. And I will pay you. Child of God, when the faith, when you use your faith for another, God will close the eyes of people that are meant to destroy you. Rather, they will pay you for using your faith for another person. Hey, don't kill that child. Don't kill that baby. God wants to, wants to pay you for nursing that baby. We need to wake up as a church and to start using our faith for others. We have to start using our faith for others. My faith, my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith, my faith. Me, myself, and my faith. It has prevented us from producing our real saviors. That's the reason why we cannot produce anything yet. Because it is my faith, my faith. It's time to use your faith to bet another man's faith. It's time to use your faith to secure another man's faith. It's time to use your faith to not another man's faith. It's time to use your faith to say, my brother will not die. My sister will not die. My brother will not fail. Brother, I will add my faith to your faith. Your faith may be small now, but I will add my faith to your faith. My brother, my sister, when the, when the, the, the mother of, of, of Moses and the father of Moses did this, and God covered the eyes of Pharaoh's daughter from recognizing that there is a game they are playing on her. Yeah. They want to play me game, but they play the game on her. Smart, smooth, and sharp. Why? Because faith covered her eyes. There is a generation that is coming out. A generation that will not use their faith for themselves only. But a generation that will use their faith for their brothers and their sisters. I'm not talking about in quotes and showmanship I get. No. I'm talking about my brother, my sister. I use my faith for you. Use your faith for me. We use our faith to secure our destinies. We use our faith to secure our to launch our futures. I can use my faith for you, you can use your faith for me. That is the kind of faith we are talking about here. Without that faith, the great leader Moses would have died a baby. How many great leaders are we killing today? <laughs> How many great leaders are we killing today? How many great leaders are we killing as babies? I remember somebody was talking to me once and he said, he went to a minister's conference and said, there is something the pastor said that he didn't like. So the guy said, he went off. The pastor invited his pastor to come and preach his spiritual father, the minister's conference. And the pastor, the spiritual father that was preaching, said, God is not, is not, he's not um, founding new denominations again. So everybody, they should stay under their pastor. 
Ask those men. He said, when the guy said that, he said, the man went off. And me agree with my friend that the man went off. God is not in the nomination flow again. God is in the unity of the church flow. But still, there will be new anointings popping up. There will be new personalities popping up. There will be new denominations popping up. It doesn't mean that the old are dead. No. Somehow, this new are the proof that the old did a good work. So you don't say because you are trying to tie people in your denomination. You don't say that uh, God is no longer bringing up new denomination. Everybody should stay in their own denomination. You will use your dogmas to kill them at the end of the day. We are meant to use our faith to secure, to bet new, <laughs> new visions. We are meant to use our faith to secure new visions. We are meant to use our faith to make sure that these new visions are not shared. We should have we should have fathers who would call sons and say, "From what I'm seeing, you are not meant to sit under me in this denomination. God is calling you to do your own work, and now I am giving you the backing. Go and do your work." A man of God was speaking in one of his programs, and he said, "If I kept so 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 pastor in this denomination now, maybe as a usher." What God is doing through him now? Come on, he pointed on one of his sons again. Say, if I kept this one too, on that we say, come and sit down here. You must be uh, whatsoever here. Yeah. What God is doing through him, God will not do through him. He opened them up to their own newness and identity. He, had, he used his faith to bet this new destiny, this new faith. He used his faith to nurture and to secure them. And today, they are an extension of his faith. I'm going to not be in the position to speak to some of the authorities in the church, but I believe this is one thing we should wake up to. That's one thing we should wake up to. When you see young chaps who are actually doing it right, use your faith to bend them. Use your faith to nurture them. Use your faith to secure them. Not to kill them, not to turn them down. I'm talking from experience. That is what led to Moses, the mighty Moses, because his parents could use their faith and the midwives could use their faith. This message, I don't know, it started somewhere, it's ending somewhere, it's going somewhere. But I believe God has spoken to so many people, the everyday Christian, the leaders in the body of Christ. God has spoken to so many people. Whatever category you fall into, I believe that the prayer we're going to pray is going to be useful to you. But before we pray, I want to pray for everyone present who is under the sound of my voice, who has not made Jesus my Lord and personal Savior. And you want to make that decision now. It's the best decision you can ever make. Just say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know that I'm a sinner. I know that you died and resurrected for me. And on Calvary trees, you took away my sin with your blood. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I make you my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my life. I choose to serve and follow you all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. And I pray for every one person who has made this decision. I ask that I receive them in the beloved. And I thank you that the grace to serve and follow you is released upon them in the name of Jesus. How many of us want to pray this moment? You're going to pray this prayer with me if you want to pray. It's a prayer from your heart. And you say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I receive grace. I receive grace. To use my faith. Use my faith. To bet great men of faith. Great men of faith. And every faith. And every faith. Of another. Of another. That was bad. That was bad. The greatness in me. The greatness be put to work. Be put to work. Now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in tongues. Spirit to tell somebody this. He said, The Lord said, I should tell you, I tell you, don't kill that vision. Don't kill that baby. Don't kill that vision. It looks like the vision is taking too much time to manifest. But the Holy Spirit says, I should tell you, don't kill that vision. He said, When I gave you that vision, you were smiling. When you 
carried the vision, you were happy. The vision was proper and goodly. But it looks like it's taking time for what you saw in the spirit to manifest physically. It looks like it's taking time for that proper and goodly vision you saw initially to become a manifestation. The Holy Spirit says, as we tell you, it took 80 years for that proper and goodly Moses to become the Savior Moses. 18 years, 18 years. The Holy Spirit has to tell you, don't kill the vision. He says, just be made patient. Keep tilling around it. Keep walking the vision. He says, keep walking the vision. He says, it will surely come to pass. He says, don't the vision the time. Wait for it. For it shall not at the end. It shall speak and not lie, says the Spirit of God. Don't kill that vision. Don't kill that vision. He says, I should tell you, Father, stop comparing your vision with other visions. Stop comparing your Moses with other babies. He says, I have a plan for your vision, for that vision. It's my vision, I get it to you. Stop comparing it with the ones I've given to others. And he says, I should tell you, Scripture says, comparing themselves with themselves, they are not wise. He says, stay on your own vision. Face your front. Focus on me, the giver of the vision. And he says, in my time for you, I will make the vision speak. He says, at the beginning of every vision, it seems like it is lying. But at the end of a face, it begins to speak and not lie. He says, you are about hitting the face of the vision where you begin to speak. He says, just hold on a little while. Don't kill that vision. Says the Spirit of the Lord. Says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm going to be praying. I give my faith to everyone's faith. And I'm going to be, we're going to be releasing an anointing on the body of Christ. The anointing to use our faith to bet, secure, and nurture great men of great faith. How many of you want to do that with me? We're going to be releasing that anointing on the body of Christ. Because that's what we are lacking seriously today. There's a lot of, if, if you go, if you go, no, 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 I don't know into so many things, but I'm talking from experience. We kill our babies. We kill our, we kill, we are professionals in killing our babies. If not for the grace of God that has kept me, I've had people who wanted to kill this vision in my hand, and they are ministers of the gospel. And we kill our babies, we kill our Moses. But we're going to be releasing an anointing now. It's going to flow, and the Bible says, upon my spirit, upon all flesh. It's going to be put, it's going to be flowing on the body of Christ. And this anointing is an anointing, to use our faith to bet, not to, and secure great men of great faith. Even when we don't have precision of their future, and understanding will make us bet them, and understanding will make us not them, and understanding will make us secure them. That anointing is released on the body of Christ now. Rasu join your faith in mind, let's release it in the place of praying in tongues. Rakito Zikabadadala, Rekedebe Swapadadabata, in the name of Jesus. And as we pray, the Lord began to miss my spirit that we cause the, the, the fear of you. Amen. That's the fear that makes leaders afraid of the next generation. That's the fear that makes leaders, more leaders want to kill the next generation. Because they are afraid that the next generation will come and do greater than they have done. But every true leader uses his faith to bet nurture and secure the next generation. We're causing that fear now. It's, it's in the church of Jesus and we're causing it. The fear of Pharaoh, we cause it now in the name of Jesus. So pray a lot and you don't it. We cause the fear of Pharaoh in the church of Jesus, in the body of Christ. The fear that kills the next generation, the fear that makes leaders kill their next generation. Many of them have justifiable reasons for that fear. Yet, if you know what songs have done to me, if you know what this young voice have done to me, if you know what they have done to me, and the devil has used that to create a fear in them, and instead of using their fear to bend not to secure the next generation, they actually use they actually use that fear to kill the
to that generation uh, unknown to them. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we stop the operation of that fear. Uh, the fear of Pharaoh, uh, we cause it in the lives of the children of God, uh, in the lives of ministers of the gospel, uh, in the life of the church of Jesus. Uh, we cause that fear and we stop his operations. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the release of the anointing yes, of the faith that bets great men of great faith. Yes, Not just great men of great faith and secure great men of great faith. The faith of the parents of Moses, the faith of the midwives to the Hebrew women. We thank you for the release of the anointing, the outpouring of the anointing of that faith upon your church now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you are going to be receiving it upon you physically, you'll be feeling it run through you. It's coming upon the church of Jesus now. Yes, on the global sea, it's coming, says the Spirit of God. Yes. It's coming now. It's I see it like a wave. You know when the tsunami wave is going? A tsunami, you know when the tsunami wave, when the tsunami goes, it then it doesn't leave really anything. It clears everything. Buildings move as if they didn't have the foundation. Yes, that, that anointing of the faith of of the, of the parents of Moses and the faith of the Hebrew women, the midwives of the Hebrew men is going over the body of Christ like a tsunami wave. Nobody will be left untouched. Yeah. If we move every word, yeah. says the Spirit of God, says the Spirit of God, thank you, Lord, in the name of God. We thank you for killing the fear of Pharaoh in the hands of the leaders of the church of Jesus, in the heart of the fathers. Yes, many of them, their hearts have been pierced, their hearts have been battered, so they cannot even try trust anybody any longer. But Lord, we thank you for healing their hearts. And Lord, we thank you for re removing that fear from their hearts. Even for upcoming generations, even like us, and also our hearts battered. We thank you for removing the fear from us and causing our faith to be released, to secure, to bet, and to, uh, uh, and to protect many Moses. Amen. Great men of great faith. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for doing this. I pray for the sick people and we'll close this meeting. And if you're sick in your body, just release your feet and let's merge our feet together. You know I need your feet and you need my feet. In the name of Jesus, we cause sicknesses and diseases. We cause infirmities. We cast out the spirit of infirmities. We command every enchantment, every divination, fear and spoil now. Every arrows that have been fired into bodies go back in the name of Jesus. Every, every satanic implantation roll off now in the name of Jesus. I command demonic manipulation out in the name of Jesus. I decree beings walk out of people. Objects fall out of people. And, and, and animals in the bodies of people come out. Everything that the devil has planted in you, out in the name of Jesus. I decree liberation. I decree deliverance. I decree sanctification. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I decree healings in mind, bodies, and souls. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it is done. In Jesus' name, Amen, Amen. Amen. We, we, we are sure you by the Holy Spirit that better is the end of the matter at the beginning. Thank God for a glorious time. All appreciate your time. Thank you for your time. God bless you. Grace to you. See you tomorrow. The last.